Welcome folks, today we are tackling the Bear and Steady Gene Challenge on Hacker Rank. This is a medium difficulty problem. I'll go over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own, and then go over my solution. Here we go. A gene is represented as a string of length n, where n is divisible by 4. Composed of four letters, a, c, t, and g. These are nucleotides in a gene, basically. It is considered to be steady if each of the four letters occurs exactly one fourth, one n divided by four times, one fourth of n. Um, for example, g a c t and uh, a a g t g c c t, which um, uh, are, you know, they're, they're both considered steady because um, each letter occurs one fourth of the time, um, for sure. Um, Beer Limack is a famous biotechnology scientist who specializes in modifying bear DNA uh, to make it steady. Right now, he is examining a gene representing, uh, represented as a string. Uh, it is not necessarily steady. Fortunately, Lamac can choose one, maybe empty, substring of the gene and replace it with any string of the same length. Uh, modifying a large substring of bear genes can be dangerous. Uh, so given a, a string, can you help Lamac find the length of the smallest possible substring that he can replace to make the gene a steady gene? Uh, to note, a substring of, uh, is considered to be made up of zero or more contiguous characters. Um, for example, the gene ACTG, triple A with a G, uh, the substring AA uh, just before the G can be replaced by a CT or a TC, uh, and that will make it steady because each character at that point would be occurring uh, one fourth of the time. Um, okay, so we're making a function, and we're supposed to return the integer that represents the length of the smallest substring. So we don't need to actually find what the substring is, just the length of it. Uh, we need to get the smallest one. Um, so that's the task at hand. Uh, I will uh, give you some time to do it on your own, and then we'll go over my solution afterwards. All right, so I'm going to be showcasing just a quick example kind of to show the algorithm and like why it works at all. <laughs> um, so the idea is we are going to first check to see um, this pattern. The pattern being that if this state isn't steady, that means that there are going to be some characters that are just extra that are more than they're supposed to be. So for example, here we have this string of characters and uh, the length is 12. And so each character should show up one fourth of that or three times. Um, and what we'll need to do is do an initial pass to just go through the whole thing and just get the count of all the letters here. Um, so if you actually count them up, you'll see that we have four A's, three T's, four C's and one G. And so right away you can say this is not steady because we have um, you know more than we should for the A's and the C's and fewer G's than we're supposed to have. So the idea is we can capture the extras. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, I'll use a, um, a runner here. So we're going to first take our runner, set it to zero, like right over here. So I'll make that blue. And we're going to traverse after we've run through it once, we're going to go back and traverse the letters one at a time. So we're going to pick up an A, basically. And by picking up an A, I mean we're going to pretend like it doesn't exist. So we're going to decrement our count. So A goes down to three. And we're going to so, so recognize now that that A, there are no more extra A's at this point. So we're getting closer to what we're looking for. Uh, T goes down to two. T goes down to one, and C goes down to three. Now we are in a state where we have no more extras going on. We have fewer than we're supposed to, yes, but we've effectively captured all of the extras. Uh, if we leave our runner here, all the extras exist on the left of that, that point. So at this point, we can confidently say that if we wanted to, we can consider this, you know, from zero to that point as a substring, and we could just change all those letters any way we want, and that could be potentially our substring. But you might recognize that there may be some things that are uh, not as efficient here because maybe I don't need all, I don't need to change all of them. What's the minimum amount that I would need to change? Well, that's when a second runner comes in. 
And now we basically kind of do the, the, the backwards thing where we're now going to add letters. And the idea is we're going to keep adding letters until we get to a point where we have our extras showing up again. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll traverse A. That goes now back up to 2. The T goes up to 2. The G goes up to 1. The A goes up to 3. And uh-oh. If we had if we add this next a in, we go up to four. So now we're going to be in a position where here, and this is the place where we would want to stop. That's where we have we we're starting to see our extra show up again. So we can now confidently say that anything between the left runner and the right runner, the red and the blue line, will capture fully capture all the extras that we saw to begin with. And we see that the extras that we had initially were the A and the C. So another way of kind of rewording this is that we're looking for the substring within this larger string that that contains the extras. We see here that this is a length three. So if we looked at this now, we'd say the min equals three. A, T, and C, you can replace those to be uh, anything you want, but basically G, T, and G. And that will give you to the steady state. Um, but we're not done yet. We would repeat this process. And what we'd effectively do is, you know, take a snapshot of this, say three is our min right now. We're going to try again, and we're going to take the right runner and then keep going. So we'll go, we'll continue going right, and we're going to say, we're going to take away a, a C. So we're going to go down. So remember, the, the right runner is taking things away, is decrementing. Um, so this goes down to two. Uh, and then it, uh, so the, the, the issue here is the uh, right runner is trying to get to a state where the count is um, under the min for each one of them. So right now the A is the issue because the A is still um, at 4 at this point. Um, so we just keep going. So we bring that down to 1. And now we hit on an A. And now A goes down to 3. So this is where we can trigger and say, okay, we can stop here, our blue, uh, our right runner. Can now stop and i can like kind of get rid of the old one which is right there and now we can say okay with between the red the red and the blue runner now we have fully captured once again a point where we can capture all of the extras that should be there um but we go you know again we continue what we were doing before and we take our right runner and we increment now and i'll add another t here that goes to three. We'll add a C here. That goes up to two. C goes up to three. So at this at this point, we have everything is okay because everything is at three. The second we would add this C, we would bring the C up to four, and that's when we would stop and say, okay, we can actually stop right here, and we would capture that and say, okay, this substring contains all the necessary extras that should not be there and that we can maybe replace. And we can see here that the min here is actually now two. So we could say this is actually updated to now two and that's the, the best that we've seen so far. And you just continue this process until you get through the whole thing basically. So this is the algorithm we'll be seeing. So let's check out the code. All right, so what I have here are two functions. The main function being the steady gene function and a helper function called extras available. And we'll check that out when we get to it. But let's uh, go through the, the steady gene first. Um, so first we'll note that I'm gonna grab the gene length, which is you know just the length, um, and I'm calculating the max nucleotide count. This is effectively the threshold that we'll be wanting to look at for each character, um, which is just a gene length divided by four. Um, yes, so. And we're told explicitly that the gene, this is this is going to be a true, <laughs> the truth that the, the length is going to be divisible by four. There's no like extras, no funny business. Um, here I'll create uh, this dictionary called all counts, which is going to capture the literal counts for each character. Um, I'll start them out at zero, but ATCG all caps, that's what we're told in the problem. So that's what I'm counting on. And here we see an initial pass, big O of N. We just go through the whole string and tally up how many um, characters for each are, are, are in there. Um, we can actually check at this point, once we do that tally, um, whether there is a steady state or not. So we can check, are there any extras available? 
and this is where I will take my helper function. I'll pass in the counts, which is just this dictionary, as well as the max nucleotide count. So for the last example, that would be um, the number would be three because it's twelve divided by four. So what is this extra available? Extra is available doing. So it's just taking in the dictionary called all counts, as well as the max nucleotide count. And it's just looping through the values in the dictionary. And it's basically just checking, are these values um, uh, greater than the, the max nucleotide possible? If it is, then return true, because there are extras still available. Otherwise, return false. That's all it's doing. Um, so this should, uh, at this point, if there are no extras available, then we we're, we know that there are there are no substrings. It says it's already steady to begin with, so we can return zero. If we if that's not the case, then there are extras, and so now we do our algorithm. So here we're going to uh, instantiate a right and left runner, uh, starting at index zero, and we're going to keep track of a min substring length, which I'll set to uh, infinity, uh, since every number is less than infinity. That will um, be easy to beat uh, the first time. Um, all right, so here we go. So while the right runner is less than the gene length, so this is going to prevent it from going over, um, we're going to basically do two things. We're going to move the left runner up to the right point and then move the right runner, sorry, move the right runner first and then move the left runner up to the right point and then calculate the, the, the substring length. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So um, basically, if extras are still available, we're going to check out, we're going to do so they're like nested while loops kind of going on here. So the first one is to note the right runner as long as it's less than the gene length so that you know we have a stopping point. And if extras are available, so again, it's going to keep looping while extras are available. And what it's going to do is we're going to grab the nucleotide for the right runner, decrement that in the count, the running count, and then we're just going to move the right runner one more. And so this will continue until either we hit the end of the string or extras are no longer available. We get into another while loop. This is now accounting for the left runner. Uh, again, left runner as long as it's less than the gene length, uh, which by the way isn't. I don't think that entirely necessary, but as long as the, I, wanted to, I wanted to keep the logic the same. Um, and this time we're saying we're looking for extras to not be available. That is our stopping point this time. And um, if that's the case, then uh, we're going to grab the nucleotide for the left runner, increment our count, and then move our left runner yet again. And so we'll get to a point where, and I, I showed this before, where the left runner here kind of goes one more than it's supposed to. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind in terms of the length. So when we do um, our, one, once we're done with this while loop, that's one, this is the first while loop, and the second one, which is the other one, that's for the left runner, then after we're done with both of those, then we can calculate the min string length, um, substring length, and I'm just going to grab the uh, minimum between the current min and the new one potentially which is to grab the right runner minus the left runner and because it goes one over get the plus one on top of that just to make the math work out so just make sure you, you do the plus one there but that will give you the the new min the min sub uh, length substring length once you're done with this entire while loop then you can uh, just effectively say I'm done and I will return the uh, min substring length run some code passing and submit some code hey looks pretty good to me let's go over some big O notation uh, so we see that we have an initial pass which we use to tally up the count uh, big O of n um, then for our while loop we would have gone through each character um, once uh, so the total time complexity is just big O of n all right, folks, so if this is the kind of content you enjoy, please make sure to like, subscribe, all the good things, and I will see you next time. Take care.